when I walked in the office and you turned around and you said, I've seen the eyes of God, <laughs> my immediate thought was, he probably figured out how to draw grass. Scotch. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to episode 155 of Coffee with Butterscotch, the game dev comedy podcast of Butterscotch shenanigans. I'm Seth and I'm the games programmer. I'm Adam and I do web things. I'm Sam and I do vector stuff. And this is a show where we talk about life, business, and working in the games industry. Today is June 10th, 2018. Before we get started, we have a warning. Anything can happen on this show. There's going to be profanity. Uh, so if you're a child, get out. Also, this is a special episode because... We're doing this live. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, not like by the time you listen to it on Wednesday, it won't be live anymore. Except for those listening to it right now. Except live. for the people who are listening to it. This is all very confusing. It's very, it's very involved. Uh, so what's happening right now is we're in the middle of the butterscotch shenanigan jam. Like it's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be going for another 13 hours, 13, 14 hours, something like that. 14 hours. Yeah. Um, so we haven't even finished our game. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people haven't finished their game. And I so, think I saw maybe 20 submissions, maybe mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, we had uh, we have had 397 people. Uh, no, if only we, we got up to 399 and then it's been actually slowly dropping. <laughs> yeah, we just couldn't. <laughs> we couldn't, we just couldn't hit, hit the 400 yep. mark. Yep. Um, so what's happening right now, as far as this episode being live, is we are currently in voice chat with uh, the Butterscotch community on the Discord, which mm -hmm. is at uh, discord.gg slash bscotch. No, obviously, if you go there now, it's too It's going to be totally Unless you're empty. in there right now as you're listening, <laughs> in which case this all makes sense yeah, and it's fine. It's, it's one of those live recording kind of situations. Um, and so we wanted to take this opportunity to talk about uh, our own experiences during the jam and kind of how it went, how it's going. And then, and then while we're sharing our experiences, uh, we're going to be sort of accumulating questions and ponderings and thoughts from our listeners in the discord. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're, if you're here live right now, go ahead and think of what you want to ask or what you want to, what you want us to talk about, about the jam and throw those questions into the discord, um, while we are kind of going through our own experiences mm -hmm. and then we'll start picking up uh, questions a little bit later. Or so. even just stories and tidbits and that sort of thing. Stories, so. just funny, funny crap that happened, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Uh, so let's talk about, while people, while people let that percolate, mm -hmm. let's talk about our own end of the jam. How did it go? What do we, where are we with this so mentally? we made a game called Goop Legacy that... Goop Legacy. Yeah, and we, it sort of ended up building lore-wise off of two of our previous Game Jam games, which was uh, Goopademic, was the first one, and then Do You Even Lift? The second one. Yes. So this is actually the third part of a trilogy. We have this. So we have this con. deep, deep lore mm -hmm. where there's goop. Yes, that's. <laughs> <laughs> so we took it, and uh, one of my. So actually, what we do before we do any game jam is rather than just use the themes and the mechanics, or sorry, the achievements and that sort of thing that are generated for the jam, uh, we actually sit down. And we say, okay, what does it, who wants to get what out of this jam? Like, what's the point, right? Because we've done so many of these now that we need to actually have sort of a personal goal going in to make it really, really effective. Right. There's a, there's a sort of existential crisis that has to happen right at the start of the jam. Like, why are we here? Why do mm -hmm. we exist? What do we want to get out of life? Kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. So uh, Friday, actually, that was what's, what we started our jam with, which is, okay, before we even begin here, uh, why, why would you even do this for the weekend? Right. Yeah. So uh, what we ended up coming up with was for me, I wanted to build a lot of creatures because Scuffle Buddies is one of the games that's currently in the works. And that game is going to take a lot of creatures. That's one of the few things we've told about it. You mean buddies? But yes. buddies, yeah. Yes. They're a bunch of creatures. And so the question was, how do you just how do you just make just an obscene torrent of these things? Uh, so that was the first one. And then the second one was to uh, try out a few different artwork styles. So one of them was to try not using dark black line work, which I yes. tried. It was horrible, so I didn't do it. But it, it was something. <laughs> It was something else, I think, is the term. But Those was, lines are good. Lines are great. I love them. I'm going to keep them forever. So that was my two things. Seth, what did you have? Uh, so my thing was I wanted to make a game that it was very deep in terms of systems. Mm -hmm. It just took a lot of sort of legwork to even like get it going because um, that's just kind of where I'm at in life right now. I just need that. I need to feel the pain. I just need to feel something, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, <laughs> I, was trying, I was trying to make too big of a game in too short of a time frame, essentially. Yes, yeah. Uh, my my go-to method is to deliberately overscope the game just to a huge margin and then just mm -hmm. see how that pans out. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing was 
Uh, I wanted to get some actual sort of hands-on stuff with with Rumpus because we've been working on Rumpus in Levelhead, um, and we've got that all working in there, but also we've never given that to people. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get a game put together that uses web features that then uh, we could send out to a bunch of people and then just watch them break the shit out of it Mm -hmm. and kind of see what goes wrong. Yeah. So in a way, actually, uh, by getting this game out into people's hands, we'll be testing stuff that we'll be using in Levelhead. Yes. So, uh, so that's kind of what I wanted to do. That's right? also what I wanted to yeah. get out of it. Adam and I wanted the same thing. Yeah. That's um, good. It's good to be on the same page. Yeah, I mean, Rumpus, you know, it's I'm so pumped about this thing that I made that just nobody gets to use for anything. And it's completely invisible. It's completely invisible, and it's completely pointless because, sure, you can log into our website and then, but then what? do nothing yeah. with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I really wanted to have a game that made that just did something interesting with web stuff, and uh, this would be the first opportunity for us to actually put a game out that has Rumpus in it, um, which then would force me to answer some questions that I have been very studiously not answering. Uh, <laughs> don't, for, look at him. don't look at me. For the some eye. time. Yeah. Mo- mostly having to do with, like, how does... How does licensing work? How do how do we distribute copies of the game that we know, like some are safe that that if we use, but they somehow get out in the wild, they're mm-hmm. still safe because nobody can ac- get access to them and see things they shouldn't see and that sort of thing. Uh, so I was kind of just jamming on new tech for that. Yes, and it went well. Yeah, I mean it's all it's all done. It's all working. Seems uh, to work. Yeah. So where where we kind of landed with our game then is, or where it's currently at as of this recording is. Should, should I say what the kind of the premise is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you, the world is overrun by goops and you are now breeding goops that are supposed to go out into the world, fight the other goops, mm-hmm. become the dominant goop. Uh, and, but the problem is goops don't live very long. No, like a minute. Yeah. But they kind of do sort of a, like like, only a minute. Yeah. They live about a minute <laughs> and they do kind of a mitosis thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like when they die, they kind of do like a Phoenix reborn rebirth kind of a thing. So, uh, so we made a game where you play and you go out in the world for one minute and you fight as many goops as you can. And we made this sort of like slap fight animation where they just like get right up on each other and they just slap. Well, I do want to say, I want to, I want to commend Seth because the, the amount of programming that went into this game is kind of obscene. And then on yeah. top of that, I think we had maybe like two conversations about UIs at any point. And the game is mainly UIs. So Seth was just over there, just like just slamming the stuff together while yeah. working on stuff. And then uh, we had this big problem, which was, the animation for how these creatures were going to fight each other, we, you know, it's one of those things where you can lean it way too involved, where yeah. I could be like, okay, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to build this very elaborate animation, but then that's going to take time away from Seth's programming, which was essentially the problem we were trying to solve. Which is a bottleneck here. So what we ended up coming up with was instead of actually doing any art or basically any programming on it, uh, the creatures just sort of slapped together repeatedly. And then we got a great sound effect from uh, Fat Bard, which literally sounds like a bunch of uh, slap slaps. Slaps. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty so, good. And then they occasionally separate and then start slapping each other again. And it's just, yeah, it turned out very nice. So as you go out into the world with your goop, you defeat opposing goops and you will occasionally acquire mutagens from them, mm-hmm. which will be passed down uh, into the next generation of goops. And sometimes, sometimes your goop offspring aren't the best, you know, sometimes it's like life. Things don't pan out the way Mm -hmm. you wanted. And maybe your goop is now a glass cannon and Mm -hmm. they've got, they've got a reduced HP, but a boosted attack, right? So depending on what kinds of mutagens you got, then you pass things down. Um, And then the final piece that we're working on is still not in yet, but Mm -hmm. we're hoping to get it in is uh, the idea of mixing your goop with other people's yeah. goop. So if I've developed a very, <laughs> very strong genetic, you know, footprint because of all the the, uh, the the stuff I've picked up out in the world and because I've just got a really good goop, then I can, you know, maybe talk to Adam. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Or my, my crit is still just super low. You know, I have this super high HP pool. I'm going to talk to Adam and see if he has a dominant gene in the right place, and then we're going to see if we can mix our goops together. Yeah, because every <laughs> because every stat on your goop gets assigned a dominant or recessive gene, mm-hmm. and that's permanent. That's for you as a as a player. Can mm-hmm. you see it? Can you tell what's recessive? You can yeah. see. Okay. Yeah. So for you as a player, uh, the first goop you ever make, it has a set of of like so like maybe it has dominant HP and recessive crit and dominant mm-hmm. attack power and whatever. And so if you mix your goop with somebody else's, then depending on the combination of dominant and recessive traits, you know, you might end up getting their HP and they might get mm-hmm. your crit. Or Someone whatever. says we should put our goop on the blockchain. Captain Wiggly said that. It, ba- <laughs> it basically is uh, on the blockchain. Yep. Uh, so, <laughs> um, yeah. So that's a pretty involved process of sort blockchain of like- Blockchain or- 
the blockchain <laughs> plus the mixing of the yeah, goops. Yeah. There's a lot of server stuff that has to go into it, but it's mm-hmm. going to be kind of our first legit Although, field test. But this is actually a good note because one of the achievements we have for the jam is to make fun of blockchain, which we actually did not do in the game. I think this is a perfect opportunity to just, we'll just put some text in there that yeah. says that's what we're doing. Put it on the goop chain. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We can, we can just, uh, <laughs> We can just add a lot of loading bars. Um, yeah, and it you, just takes longer to do everything. Yeah. yeah. And it uses all of your GPU. Yeah. Um, and then we get Bitcoins somehow. Yeah. When you, but then also when somehow people are just giving us money because we did this. Mm-hmm. So some people have a little money counter in the bottom right. That's just, it just goes up. It's called the VCs. Yeah. <laughs> do this. So, yeah, so you're basically doing an ICO every time you have a new. Yeah. A new uh, birth of a, of a. This makes group. me think it would have been awesome to make a game that was like a. Uh, like a blockchain startup simulator, mm-hmm. you know? Oh yeah. Where you, guys- <laughs> <laughs> where you just get a whole bunch of money and then, and then now you just sit there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Cause it turns out you don't know. Nobody you, knows what you, do you don't. Yeah. Uh, so really it's a game about you go and pitch to investors. It's a pitch. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, we'll call it blockchain startup simulator. And then you just go and you pitch to investors and it's like a, maybe it's like a, Let's see, a random business jargon and tech jargon flies on and you have to assemble mm. phrases to impress the investors. Yeah, yeah the right? cool thing is that now <laughs> with any new sort of hyped up tech thing, you could just reskin this a little bit, put in some new words and Boom. just sell the game again. It'd yeah. be like one of those Onion articles that just circulates every couple of years <laughs> right. when something happens. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to put a question out to the listeners in the Discord, mm. which is uh, what was the hardest part of this jam for you guys? Yeah. So far. Because uh, we ran into some snags. Plenty of snags. So let's talk about it while the, while the questions accrue. Yeah, so I'll, I'll volunteer. So I'll, I'll share first. You know, it's an act of trust. You share. Other people share stuff. It's a safe space. Let's do it. So uh, <laughs> well, it's a safe space that will be made public on the internet. It's yep. a publicly accessible safe space yeah. where once later. posted, it's anybody synchronous. can say anything they want on it. Yeah, so uh, what happened to me was, <laughs> was uh, particularly interesting because we haven't actually jammed in a very long time. Okay, so it's been it's been a year. It's been actually since the last Shenanigans Jam, and we did lightly jam when we were working on Levelhead over the Global Game Jam weekend. Yes, but that was I mean Levelhead is now actually a big project. It was supposed to be a tiny one. Uh, it got bigger, and um, working on a big project is never the same as working on a game jam because in a game jam context, it's very fun and it's very lighthearted, and you can just say who gives a shit basically whenever something weird starts happening. And this is where our slap fight came exactly. From. I was trying to actually cut up battle animations where like one of them would swing it like like lunge at the other and then if it was a miss then they would lunge off to the side right. you know worked on that for a while i was like this i can i mean i can do it we had and we had a conversation forever. yeah and, and then we were just like can we not can we just not do this and then the yeah. slap fight emerged which ended up being a piece of gold well it, ter- yeah, it turned out that i had like a shake code involved where when they when they hit each other they would vibrate mm-hmm. it's like i wonder i wonder what it would look like if i just amped up the vibration and just put them next to each other <laughs> right. the answer is Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, although actually without the sound effects though, it was very disturbing. It was, yeah. they're just sort of vibrating so, on top of each other. Yeah. I mean, if two things get close together and start vibrating, I mean, who knows? Who you knows? Can, there's only one, <laughs> there's only one way to interpret that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, back to, so what, what I ended up sort of going through over the weekend was, uh, I guess kind of, kind of re figuring out again, how to, how to jam and a big, a lot of stuff has happened, uh, you know, for me personally in the last year, as far as the sort of journey of making game art goes. And one of those was, you know, I, I've started, I have a teacher. I've had two teachers now total. Um, and since I've, since I was between my last teacher and this new one, uh, I sort of had like a f- general fall off of like really intense interest in doing the art and it became much more about production. So right now in Levelhead, we're working on these enemies and they're just really hard. They're extremely technical. Seth and I have to go back They've and forth like a lot. they got like 25 frames. They're just very involved things. And they're by far just the most complicated thing I've ever built. And, uh, and a big part of it was, you know, every day when I was working on these things, I, I was always just feeling like I'm not, like I'm not making these fast enough. They always, they seem to look good, but they, they just wasn't coming across fast enough. Yeah. And so I think I've just for the last couple of weeks, I've been kind of just, just kind of bumming myself out. And so this happened, it came to head kind of on Saturday afternoon or so, um, where I just had to sort of recalibrate in a major way and just sort of say, okay, I'm here to just have a good time and pick a few things. And the truth is like, it, for this game in particular, the art needs, I had already finished by Saturday morning, which was all of the goops. Yes. Anything else was just kind of extra cool stuff. And in fact, anything else beyond just a little bit was going to be too much because Seth was the boss. Because I can't get it in there. <laughs> yeah. So I basically had this grace period where I could, you know, take some time and think and then reorient myself. So starting yesterday afternoon, 
started having a great time again. Uh, built some cool rocks and some other environmental pieces, which you guys will see in the game, um, that I'm actually very proud of and, and got to do some studies on and stuff like that. So it was a, so it was very much like the move or the, the TV show, the flash where mm-hmm. he's capable of doing all these things, but he was the whole time just like, but I can't, yeah, he's just being a baby. He, and then he so did. <laughs> that's yeah. basically what was happening. So I, right, I so just sort of started enjoying myself. All right. So let's, let's look at some of the answers we got from folks uh, in the discord of some of the hard things that they encountered. Uh, so obviously we've got things like Sam Robinson, hard time staying awake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a rough one. Z- Zacy Zacy apparently broke their foot, which what? you know that's <laughs> one of those things that if you jam real good, you know you're gonna break mm-hmm. limbs. I yeah. think. Did they have a, the mark of a good? Did jam. they have that ergonomically yeah. horrifying uh, achievement that they're trying to get? I think yeah. they, they were made it a little too to, horrifying <laughs> to play this game. You have to ergonomically break your foot. destructive. <laughs> Um, we also have crazy guy one Oh eight. One of the hardest things was misspelling upgrade as Ugg prayed, which, <laughs> um, that is actually a, that's something that I think plagues all of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, up, update becomes Udpate. I don't know. Uh-huh. If this, yeah. Yeah. Any of these words that you type a lot, they, they very rapidly just lose meaning and then you start. And then you're letters. unable to recognize when they're correct or not. Mm-hmm. There's uh, actually one very weird one for me, which I used to, I used to use Python as a programming language quite a bit. Mm. But for some reason, almost every time I typed it, I would type Python. Yeah, that <laughs> happens as well. I don't know why. Um, when I was in, when I was in law school, I don't know. Yeah, so when I was in law school, I had to start using the word statute a lot. Mm. Never used that word. It just means law. Because when you're a lawyer, you got to use dumb words for things like preclude mm-hmm. instead of prevent uh, or statute yep. instead of law. And so now I literally can't type the word statue without a T. It's like working yeah. its way it's creeping in. in. Yeah. yeah. Although, how often do you need to use the word statue? Probably not. About every, about three times a day. Oh. I, I, there's a lot of statues. Uh, we also <laughs> had a lot of people with issues figuring out how to upload their videos. So it always happens. Uh, just, just try, just try well, more. There are clearly, yeah. some there's plenty. So of there's time. a problem, active problems right now. People talking about struggling to make and or upload videos. Yeah. So this is a this is the kind of the classic game jam problem. Yeah. yeah, at least for our jams, since we were it's always the that thing that you idea. think is going to be at the end. You're like, we'll just kind of real quickly squeeze yep. that thing in. Uh, if you haven't done a video recording or anything before, then you're gonna you're gonna have a, a rough time with it. Yep. Uh, so what else do we got in the list here? Well, I think a lot of people just were talking largely about sort of working with engines that maybe you don't have a lot of experience with, or that even lack documentation in, in some regards. Yep. Which is always a rodeo. Um, and I know this has happened a lot with Adam with a lot of the web services stuff that he's been doing uh, lately. It's it's far enough on the edge of sort of the weird stuff that looking up documentation doesn't there are no doesn't answers. always help. There are no documentation. Or, or there, there may be answers, but what you're trying to accomplish is so weirdly specific mm-hmm. that you're not going to find that answer, even if it does exist somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. So next question for the audience: uh, Was this your first jam, and if so, uh, is it is it what you expect? Is it your last jam? Is also? this going to be <laughs> your first and last experience? Well, I want to talk a little bit about um, sort of our first experiences doing jams because I think the community aspect is a, is just a huge part of it. So for me, the, the first one I did was four people total, um, which weirdly was it was so small. That it was fantastic because it, we we're all just in a room. Four people. <laughs> Four people. And we're working on two different games, but I think because of that closeness, then it, it wasn't. This, it wasn't like fifty or so where it was, you know it's a crowd, but you it's large enough that you don't necessarily talk to everybody because you don't have to. Yeah. Um. So that was the first one I did, and the experience I had was just. I mean, everybody was so nice, and then and then uh, so generous with their time because I didn't know how to program at the time, didn't know how to do art. One of the guys, uh, Scott Petrovic, who's in the, the community here in St. Louis, ended up doing art, and then I think he made sound for the games too. Um, and it was just like a really nice, it was just like a really lovely little thing. And then the most recent ones we've been to have been more of these larger ones, so like 300 plus people, the global game jam in St. Louis is a really big thing. Um, and those have been a lot of fun and they have a completely different energy to them as far as this. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. And I think it's also really interesting as, as you progress. So, I mean, we have a lot of, a lot of first timers, uh, looks like in the mm-hmm. discords, we've got, uh, CDC Mully first jam, uh, first game ever made. Oh, Loved it. We'll congrats. be coming back. Captain Wiggly uh, uh, smarmily said, not my first. However, it is my last so far, which is technically true. <laughs> uh, 
all of us. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So nice one I know this there. Is, uh, some people's first times with a team, which we will get into later. I want to know. Team dynamics. Yeah. Because I saw, I think on the first night. But don't, like yeah, don't be talking shit about your team. Because oh, yeah, nice. the jam is still going on and they're probably in the Discord yeah. too. So. <laughs> you guys, always been on nice, the but, BL. But I think, uh, you know, I saw in the first couple hours, I think one of the teams broke up, which probably just had too many people in it. I think there were a few of them that went through the, the crowd the crowd forging site that we had provided, yeah. and we saw a few that had like seven plus. There were people a few in that them. had too many people. It was just too many. We always suggest you know two, four max because it's just so much easier to kind of handle the communication stuff. Yeah, and uh, Coffee Chemist said uh, this is this is their first jam with such a community heavy aspect. Had done two college jams, but but nothing like this. First time doing it solo as well. So this oh, is cool. actually something that. Um, that we are pretty strong believers in is that it, it means a lot to know that there's a lot of other people sort of like in, in, in the, the trenches, in the trenches yeah. with you going through the same weird crap that you're doing. Um, and actually one of the first jams I ever did was uh, Ludum Dare, which again, that's an online jam. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't, I didn't have a Twitter account and I was living alone in uh, Iowa. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, people are using this hashtag. Maybe I'll check into this. And so I started uh, just like refreshing the the hashtag and people were posting screenshots and all kinds of other stuff. And it, and it helped me sort of stay motivated to push through all this weird stuff because so many other people were posting so many cool things and it was yeah. very exciting. And I was like, oh, I got to try to do something like that. Yeah. Right? Well, the thing I love so, the most is seeing, especially having, having the community aspect and having gifts, gifts in particular come popping out. It's just like one of my favorite things. And so mm -hmm. I know one of my favorite ones, I think it was the Finn, Finn No Limits uh, hot dog, the hot dog guy doing the floss <laughs> dance. Which yes, was, yeah, which I'm a big was, fan of that. Hot dog. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's one of those things where it's just it's just so fun, like just so damn fun. And and it's not necessarily so like you you see that in Fortnite, right? And so it's like it's just a fun thing to see entering into the Shenanigans Jam in like a really weird, <laughs> weird yeah. way through a hot dog of all things, which I believe originated on some Katy Perry concert. Yeah, we watched it. We watched some it back. kid with a backpack did this dance. Then much, much later, Finn No Limits comes to the Shenanigans Jam, mm -hmm. draws a picture of a hot dog, anthropomorphic hot dog person named Hot Dog Boy. Yeah. And of course, every character needs an idol animation. Mm -hmm. And I guess Hot Dog Boy's idol animation is to do the floss, <laughs> the floss dance. For <laughs> Which is awesome because I mean, I think the, the fun part about it too is, is it's, I don't even know how many pixels it is. I mean, you could see the pixels. It's like 16 pixels. It's like a small thing, right? You really gotta, you really gotta use every pixel. To pull off a floss dance in that many pixels. That's impressive. That's it's impressive. a sort of a every yeah. part of the buffalo kind of situation. <laughs> yeah. You got no pixels to waste. Yeah, I'm, I do want to hear about people's uh, jamming experience who, you know, if you jammed solo, what was that like? Or if you jammed with a team, whether it was for the first time or, you know, for the nth time. Yeah, was uh, it what, what you was expected? That like? Was it... Well, do you think it was would be easier with fewer people, mm -hmm. easier with more people? You know? Did you run into any communication hurdles? Yes. Those are always fun. But again, be yeah. nice. It'd be nice. Yeah. And so so in our experience, um, we've done jams of up to, I think, six. Um, but honestly, uh, you know, there's, there's not a magic number. It really kind of depends on how you communicate, how you manage your stuff, and then also just kind of what everybody's interests are, you know? Mm -hmm. If you've got five programmers and one artist... Um, you could still make that work, but you're going to have to do some thinking about yeah. it, right? Yeah. Um, so we, we kind of just play it safe where we just keep it very small and yeah. just kind of go with that so we can mitigate sort of the... Well, it's actually been... I think there's only probably one other person we've actually sort of actively jammed with who wasn't either employed by the studio or one of us, like one of the three of us, which is uh, Michael Hall, one of the guys in, in, uh, you know, in the community here. Yep. Um, which has been a lot of fun working with him, but... It's interesting because you can, I mean, work with different people, you'll sort of find different strengths you have or different weaknesses based on, because like everyone's actually operating as, a, you're operating as like a system that's making a game, right? And so if you, as soon as you recognize that, then it does get interesting to have other people kind of thrown in there because it'll show you different variables that are at play with, with yourself or, you know, whatever the, the rest of the team dynamic is, it'll change completely with one person. Yeah, everything changes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we also had one person or a few people kind of stop by the studio uh, this week and uh, during the weekend and, and just hang out for a bit, but it was pretty interesting overall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's get some answers here. Potty Gamers started with their kids on their team. Oh. Started. Apparently, att <laughs> the attention span just ran right out. Yeah. Well, probably immediately. Um, making games is exciting at first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think the brainstorming phase where everyone's like, yeah. And then, yeah. yeah and then once you have this whiteboard full of things, it's like, okay, let's do that now. And everybody's like, oh, shit. I don't want to. I don't want to stare at a screen <laughs> for 40 hours. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, and we, I think it's it's very heavily romanticized. Yes. I mean, very heavily. This isn't that we worry about all the time when we talk to people who want to become game developers or want to get into the industry or something. It's just, it's not, it's not what you think it's going to no. be, you know? It's, yeah, there's a, there's just a, I mean, it is, it is exciting. And of course, the closer you get to the end product, you know, the more you kind of really feel the, you're like, I'm doing it. Like I'm mm-hmm. making a thing. But mostly you just have to love the work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and one, one thing that we've kind of talked about is, you know, when we first started as a studio, we would make games on a three month span. And there's mm-hmm. kind of like when you're making a bigger project, there's a period kind of in the first couple of weeks that kind of feels like that early few hours of the jam, you know? Right. Uh, but then that middle period, which is normally like the sort of uh, uh, dread that you feel mm-hmm. like starting about when you're about halfway through the jam, you're like, oh my God, is this going to come together? This is terrible. Everything's yeah. fucked. You actually just live in that. That, that's just like a, a year yeah. or two right? so for that that phase for crashes i think lasted a whole year and then there's like a, a, a la, the last month right before launch we're like oh we did it it all came yeah. together <laughs> yeah. if um, you're lucky otherwise you're yeah. like, it still doesn't work <laughs> uh Shit. we also had dark project 08 jammed with a team of four to five uh, and said it was incredibly useful to have such a talented team working with them so we got some good nice. Uh, maybe those were friends in advance or maybe they're new friends now mm-hmm. you know well see andrew p said he found it harder to get in there and stay in there than when everyone was actually jamming in the same physical space. Yeah. Which is definitely a thing. Um, yes. Working, I mean, it's, it's kind of like working remote. Like, we don't actually like, you know, we had that, that experience with Adam working remote uh, from Texas for a year, year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah. Um, it's just not as good. It's just not as good. And so sometimes, I mean, you, you can't, you know, you can't help it. But, uh, but as, yeah, as much as possible, get people in the same room. It's just so much more fun. Which is why we always tell people, you know, if you're going to jam... Uh, you know, maybe do one or two of them solo, just so you kind of understand how all the pieces work. And it's really, it's kind of a formative thing to do, do a solo jam. Uh, but once you get kind of some confidence under you, then you know, see if you can pull in a buddy for, for a weekend and, and do that sort of thing. Make sure they're fun though. Otherwise. Yeah. Really and and, and it, if you show a buddy, the thing you made solo, if you, if you did at least a vaguely good job, then it's very easy to get them excited about, yeah, you know, that's jump, true. jumping off. Cause you're like yeah. your art in here or your programming. Making this do a floss dance, you know, everyone gets excited about. That. Yes, <laughs> once you, once you can show your friends the hot dog boy doing the floss dance, yep. all bets are off. You can get anybody. You could get people to quit their PhD program. Yep, uh, that's true. And join your startup company for no pay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Although I didn't quit, I just finished it. You just finished that's true. it. He, he did technically finish it. Yeah, but yeah. so you didn't go on. But I didn't go on to do other things with it. I mean, I did, but it's making video games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we also had Coffee Chemist uh, did the jam solo, which mm-hmm. cheers to that. Yep. That's very difficult. Um, I think uh, one of the hard parts about going solo is, of course, motivation. No, I think it's, you know, there's that saying like busy people, if you want something to get done, have a busy person do it, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you do it solo, you are the busy person. Yeah. Uh, so you get a lot of things done, but it's also never feels like it's enough things. Yeah. yeah. Well, you also have to do all this stuff because in the end you're, you're uploading the thing, you're doing all the art, you're yep. doing all the programming and, uh, and balancing all of the requirements to actually pull all that off is it's a feat. It's, it's a it's genuine very feat. hard. Yeah. yeah Cause you, you can't, can't, you can't know how long any one you know, item is yeah. going to take. Especially if you're new to each one of the things. Cause I know a lot of people pick up, uh, I don't know if, I don't know if coffee chemists in particular, but I know a lot of people, if it's their first jam, it might be their first jam solo in the first place, but also their first time doing programming or doing art or both. <laughs> yep. Or both. In which case, if you finish it, it's just like, how did you, how did you do that? <laughs> you yeah. know, which is a cool yeah, thing. No matter what the thing looks like, that's awesome. That yeah. You did it. You know? Yes. So this afternoon, I mean, it took me I think an hour and a half to kind of get all the screenshots cobbled together and put the text together and get our banners and everything put together for the itch page, which, you know, that's just programming over there the whole time. So that you, he doesn't have to do that. Um, but yeah, there's, there's always stuff that you have to figure out how the hell you're going to fit all in when you're, when you're doing it by yourself. So I think if, if anyone in the, in the crew hasn't done uh, a solo jam before, I'd highly recommend it because I think they're very informative and they make you feel, I don't know, it makes you feel like you are so... You, well, you you find all kinds of stuff that, I mean, w- one of the advantages we had when we started was um, I Sam had made some games by himself and mm-hmm. I had made a bunch of games by myself, which means that we each knew how to talk to each other about each other's roles. Yeah. So if I said to Sam, you know, something, I need a, I need a different sub image for this. And he's not sitting there going, well, what the hell is a sub image? I thought I was just making mm-hmm. pictures, you know. Um, or I can talk about bounding boxes and collision masks and, and because he's made games and he knows how those fit together. Yeah. Um, so those kinds of things, 
if you do solo jams, you start to see how pieces fit and it becomes invaluable mm -hmm. for, for a team. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the next thing I want to ask about, which is, got? so we jammed in a new space. Mm. We last week at the, in the last week's episode, we talked about, we got a new office or we were working on getting a mm -hmm. new office. We got one. We got it. We got our key cards. The morning of the jam. The night. No, it was, it was, it was the, the night of the jam. It was 4 p.m. on Friday before. Yeah, yeah we weren't actually sure where we were going to be able to jam mm -hmm. because we didn't have our key cards yet. So yeah. we didn't know if we could get in over the weekend. And I lost the first uh, like six hours of focus on the jam because I was going back and forth with our insurance company and trying to get <laughs> get everything finalized so that yep. we could get. So it was a rough entry point. Mm -hmm. um, but we, so we were working out of a totally different space. And so the question I want to pose to everybody in the discord and something we can talk about as well mm -hmm. is how do you feel like the space that you were in, um, worked Affected. for you sure. yeah. and is there something that you feel like you would change if you did another jam mm -hmm. in terms of where you're at, either changing, uh, the configuration of your space in some way, uh, or finding a, just a different place to go mm -hmm. you know so say so this is our first time jamming from like an office i, guess, I think it is like a real office yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that was new uh the thing i liked about it is the, in particular the place we got we made sure we got a place that just has all the stuff that we usually essentially need to go on walgreens runs for or whatever else and so they have this unmetered snacks in the kitchen yep and also Unmetered. these coffee machines where you just go up and you're like, give me a, give me a long espresso. I don't even know what that is, but I drank two of them. They're very long. They're, so give me, yeah, yeah, they take longer to drink than a regular <laughs> espresso. <laughs> and longer to make. <laughs> give me two of these long length. espressos and then it, you know, just shoots them out into a cup. It's fantastic. And it really shoots them in there. It really like, does. You gotta, you gotta be ready. Yeah. So I, I really enjoyed uh, working in the new space and the internet's super fast and all that. Um, I think it was, it was interesting though, because I was working from a laptop all weekend, which I haven't yeah. done in a while. I started on Friday on a laptop until we knew we could move in. So then Saturday morning, I brought my whole rig over. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I didn't make the jump yet. So I have all my stuff packed up for tomorrow, for Monday. Um, but I didn't actually do it over the weekend. And so this morning I woke up and like my my neck was just... It just creeps up on you. And the thing is, like, I, I feel like I maintain my posture pretty well. But I recognize, so last night at, I think, 9 p.m., uh, I think you'd stepped out to go scoot down to Qdoba to get a burrito and I have a scoot. I literally have a scooter. That's yeah. why he, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and sure. It was like, Oh, do you mind if I turn the lights on? Cause it was just basically pitch black. In the room. <laughs> Neither of us had noticed because of course we're working. And so he goes and flips the lights on. Um, and then I realized because he flipped the lights on like my body position, I had, I just like, kind of like full turn into just, just vulture vulture vulture. <laughs> over yeah. my laptop. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I'm going to be doing some stretches the next couple of days. So I would, I would actually have my space set up really, which should be good to go for next time. Hope. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be working that hard for that long, you got to be ergonomic gotta have, about it. You got to have the non horrifying. Yeah. And, and no, no matter, you know, people talk about how you subconsciously don't blink as much when you're looking at a monitor and, and you don't, you don't realize, especially laptops, how they just, you, you slowly just start vulturing your neck. It's almost like you secretly want to get in it. Yeah. You know, your, your whole body's just like, I'm going to, I'm just going to get closer, <laughs> constantly closer. Yeah. Uh, so let's see what kinds of responses we got. So, coffee chemist, uh, I'd love to do a jam in a space shared by friends. I've done them in a college uh, and mm. solo in my parents' house, but neither give the give you the freedom you need. Um, some people say Sam Robinson something about working away from home keeps you productive. Yeah, which that is true. We've all found. Yeah, which is rough because we have been working from my home for the past mm -hmm. uh, two years, basically. Before that, we were in an apartment. Yeah. So, yes, we migrated first... from apartment to apartment. Mm -hmm. This is our first legitimate office space. It definitely, you definitely feel it. Yeah. I, th well, I think there's also something that happens is when you're home, the, you just build up a, a list. We well, sort of, chores. yeah, you sort of just kind of know what you need to be doing. And because you're capable of doing it, you have to constantly decide. Am I like, okay, am I going to go? I could, I you could, could do all those dishes. Do dishes. Yeah, yeah. Whatever else. Yeah. But I mean, home is also, home is where you go to relax. It's where yeah. you go to play. It's where you go to veg. It's where you go to do a lot of things. It, it's also where you might go to work, mm -hmm. but because there are so many associations in your brain yes, with that space and also so many habits attached to everything. So when you walk in the door, do you have some habit? Like you go, the first thing you do, like first thing I always do when I get in the door, go in the kitchen, drink a glass of water. That's step mm -hmm. one. Open up the cabinet, see what's in there. I already mm -hmm. know what's in there, but I'm going to take a look at it. You know? <laughs> so You're a person. Yeah, You're we, we all have these habit loops that, that interrupt the, 
the possibility of just going and doing work. Mm -hmm. Unlike an office space where its purpose is to work. And as long as you reserve it for that purpose, then all of your habit loops and all of the the triggers that are created by that space are now all revolving around doing the work. Yeah. Being productive, not around all the other stuff. Yeah. Yes. So you can, you can get a good separation. I saw Francis said, uh, they're jamming in the garage. And the worst part was that it's got a big glass door next to it, which gets really cold overnight. Yep. But I don't know. We, we tend to keep our place pretty chilly because your brain runs hot. During that's right. Day, you, know? yeah, you just need to eat that's more. That's why I shave my head. I just, yeah, you can I, eat it. Yeah, exactly. You just need to eat more sugar because that, that glucose goes right into your brain. There you go. Which generates more heat and also more programming art and sound effects. Mm-hmm. That's right. Everything you need. And if you keep it cold uh, in your office, then the chocolate will keep better. So, also true. <laughs> true. And then you won't get sticky, gross fingers while you're trying to type on a keyboard. Yeah. So if you were working out of a cold ass garage, uh, just stock up on chocolate, you know, yeah. and that should take care of that for you. I saw Angry Muffin did it in his brother's living room with the brother as the primary programmer, which sounds pretty cool. So it's really I've fun. heard that works pretty well. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> it works all right. Yeah. Uh, we also had Mad Russian uh, said to add, he would, uh, he or she would add a mini fridge to mm. their space always good that is something that we were that we were missing adam brought cream sodas and we had to just chug them because yeah, i brought them in the morning so we'd have morning cream soda which was a little weird we do we could just use the fridge it. you I could mean, use the fridge downstairs did you know that i mean i know that but yeah but so that's far away so the position <laughs> that our office is in is actually the furthest place from the kitchen i do think which that's is a good probably thing. good yeah, it's probably it's good because i guarantee you those, we were, yeah. those unmetered snacks but also, I don't I don't trust other people enough because it's, it's just a big community fridge, you know. To that, that I could just put a can of soda in there. Oh no, be like, mm. and yeah, and, and yeah, someone especially when there's that. a pile of like twelve of them. They're like, no, it's good news. Yeah, I'm taking yeah. cream soda. I will say, yeah, you'd probably be less likely to have somebody take your diet cream soda. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> than a lot of things. Yeah. It's, not should, a, it's not exactly gold. I should, start, <laughs> <laughs> I should start stocking up my diet cherry Seven Up and some zebra cakes in there. Because also, no one's going to touch those. But no one's going to touch delicious. Diet Cherry 7 Up. No one. <laughs> I, mean, I see, I, I'm uh, going to touch it. Max 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 or Triple Max uh, said, My wife took the kids for an overnight trip so I could have the whole house to myself. She's the goddess. Yes, she is. That is nice. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. It's yeah. so good when your people kind of team up for you. I know my wife brought uh, brought me lunch yesterday. And then I said, I think Seth's wife brought food for most of the crew yesterday. Yes. Yeah, she made a bakery out. run, brought some uh, almond croissants in. Yep. <laughs> so good. <laughs> good well, stuff. kind of on the opposite end, Mortal Glitch had to take care of their fiance. Oh, no. Had pneumonia. Had pneumonia. Oh, man. So, unfortunately, sometimes you still got to be a good person mm-hmm. and you can't just abandon all of your world responsibilities. But so, again, good on you for making a game and taking thing. care of your This is just another other. one of the constraints. You know, we should have added, we can add an achievement, which no, is do right. the gym while also taking no, care of No, no, no. Just no just because this will encourage somebody to find a sick- handicap somebody on purpose <laughs> and then take care of like them. Like break their foot. Listen, yeah. we got a great community <laughs> of non murderers. As far as we know. <laughs> The, that's the thing about murderers is you don't you, just you don't, don't know, know they're a murderer until you're dead. Exactly. <laughs> and then it's too late. You call it the shit happens one or Murphy's Law. That would be the achievement for having to Murphy's divert law. your oh, attention. Actually, yeah. Murphy's Law, is it, that would just be an achievement for something really f- yeah. out of control. Here's out. the crazy thing, though, because I think if, if something bad happens to you during a jam and you still manage to pull the jam out, everyone's like, wow, incredible. But if you're on a you know, two-year game dev project, there's just a stack of shit that's happened. You know, where yeah. you're like, oh, my car got imploded by hail. My dog got sick. My wife got pneumonia, whatever else. And by the time you get to the end of it, there's so many that it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> no one's like, great job. You did it despite all these things. They're like, okay. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. hypothetically, if someone were to, you know. Have cancer for have two cancer years. <laughs> for two years and make a giant game. Uh, eventually. Care, whatever. You know? Just, I think just, most people would disagree. Uh, At but- some point it gets old. You know, you're like, this is old hat. Yeah. I'll be the, I'll take the, the, the king of the achievement for Murphy's Law, I think I'll be. I'll just put that in my yeah. pocket. Yeah, but again, don't <laughs> encourage people to try to outdo you. No, do not. Please don't try don't. to outdo getting cancer. I don't know if there's, you can outdo no me. Good. I think the next step is just being dead. So don't, don't, yep. don't That's, outdo it. Or just getting like really close, which is, you know, you're really just gambling. That's true. With your life. Mm-hmm. That's right. The probability just situation. Literally. Don't do it. All right. Well, speaking of which, let's talk about health and jamming. Mm. So, so we did talk about ergonomic problems yep. people breaking their feet uh, <laughs> uh people turning into vultures mm-hmm. uh so i want to know how's everybody feeling like it's just, i guess check into your body because your mind might be just sort of enjoying itself your, right your now. brain is obviously going to be sort of uh, yeah it's gonna be running hot mm-hmm. but your body 
what's happening to it right now? Uh, did you get enough sleep? Did you, mm -hmm. what did you have for food? Do so, you feel like that was a good idea or a bad idea? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So my, uh, my mistake, I think, was that my wife and I have been thinking about getting blinds for the bedroom so that it's actually super dark at night. Because now that it's summertime, it's bright almost all yeah, the time. you got to have those blackout blinds. So when we don't. So I think it's just been, I've been sleeping fine, but it's just been like, it's just creeping in. No, it, just, it just eats your soul. It's just been eating me. And so, uh, so I think that, that was a big problem. And then I didn't work out at all, except for this morning. I was like, I need to use my legs because yesterday I didn't even join Seth when he went, he went for a walk to go get a burrito. And I was like, I need to, to finish these things I'm working on. So I didn't move. I think I didn't move. For probably like 10 hours. <laughs> from well, a, you just, all you did. You were just hunched over. Yeah, got, the yeah. only thing you moved was you slowly stretched your neck further and further forward. Yeah, which turns it not good. It's not a good thing to do. So yeah. this morning I went for, it was literally, I think like a 12 minute run. It was, it was not long. Yeah, I was plodding along and it was very painful, but, but I just, I was like, I need to get up and I just need to go, go. move my body. Yeah. I had the same feel. Well, it's, it's also compounded because, uh, all of my life's, healthy and good rituals that revolve around my space, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the gym that I go to is right next to my house, but it closes. It's not a 24-hour gym, so I can't just go all the time. Uh, we just moved to this new location. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I'm working in kind of the commute time and stuff. And so I haven't had time to cook. I haven't had time to exercise. I've just been like, Running on unmetered snacks and <laughs> yeah, uh, whatever your wife brings by and throws whatever <laughs> whatever somebody whenever somebody throws a croissant, I just catch it in my mouth like a dog <laughs> catching a frisbee. Whole. I swallow it whole and I get back to jamming. Uh, so I'm definitely not in the best condition. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm definitely feeling this past week. I, th I think, but it's not it's, necessarily the jam. It's kind of like the jam plus the we, move. There was a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, there was just a lot a happening lot at the same time. I mean, I, and I had friends visiting who I haven't seen for a year. Yeah. Uh, and so oh, yeah, I, you were gone for so two I had evenings. This, yeah, so, I, so I spent my evenings hanging out cause I had this conflict now. I was like, I got to do this jam. I have responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, but these are friends I haven't seen for two years. So I need to spend time with them. And, uh, so I also didn't do anything else besides basically like intense, jam. rapid socializing, jamming, and then moving the office. Right. Uh, and, and I do, I feel it. I feel like shit. You know, I also, <laughs> I also had a, uh, I had a, I had a choice to make. Because I, mm. cause I woke up on Thursday morning and walked to the dog, you know, doing the normal stuff. Mm -hmm. And I noticed, hey, there's a black circle in my vision and I don't know what the fuck it is. Mm. And it's moving when I move my eyes, you know, it's tracking with me. It's kind of off of my periphery. And I'm like, this is probably an it's issue. Not good. Uh, so I, I, set up an appointment, I set up an appointment for Saturday morning and to go to get my eye looked at. And then I realized, I was like, they're going to dilate my pupils, which means I'm going to lose like the first half of Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it takes about four to six hours to come down off of a pupil dilation. Yeah. And you can't, you just can't see very well. And so I set up the appointment and then I thought for a while and I was like, I'm going to, I, I, I'm just going to jam. This is, I, 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 got, I got that note and I was like, please don't go blind. <laughs> please don't let this be an actual problem. So it kind of, it kind of diminished. Uh, and I think it's probably fine. I'm going to still go in and get it looked at. <laughs> yeah. It's, you it's just go. always best. It's probably nothing. I've got, I've now had floaters for the past, I believe three months, four months actually. And they, they clearly are not going away. This is just I my feel life. Like I've now. always had them. I've never experienced this. I don't know what floaters are. I've never experienced. You know, this like thing when you people, when you look around, there's stuff there's that kind of like drifts. There. Yeah, that's never happened there. to me. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Crystal clear. I've never had. Mm. I've I've read about this concept, but I've never had it happen. I think maybe this might be your eyes telling you that the so there's like a black hole in there, right? And it needs yeah. some light in there, like perhaps from a laser. Mm. You know what I mean? Like. Maybe it is now time. My eye is like, just to send that eyeball. laser right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just where this black get that laser. Zap it. Get that LASIK done. Yeah. All right, let's see what, let's see what uh, everybody in the Discord's feeling about health. Uh, I see uh, Musha said he found it very hard to shut off his brain at night and get to sleep. That yes. is hard as shit. Yeah. And I think it's, it tends to be a bigger problem for the programming side. We've talked about this before because programming, you have to build a big mental model of kind of what is happening. And then it's just in there. And you're working on problems and then your brain will just tell you. And you got, and you get this kind of like bug eyed look like Arnold mm -hmm. Schwarzenegger on total recall when yeah, his yeah. helmet comes off on Mars. Mm -hmm. yep. You and know what I'm talking about. I, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. I've seen it. I've seen it on both of your faces. Yeah. Uh, and the art one's a little bit different because you can really pick 
pick up back where you were just by looking at it. Right. Yeah. You don't have to build a big, yeah, I think on the art side, you have more of kind of a mental to do list of just all the shit Correct. you still have to do, which is as exciting oftentimes as oh, yeah. your program. Absolutely. Problems. Yeah. The program side, it's more just like, there's some things you didn't solve that, you know, you have to solve Yep. and you're afraid to stop trying to solve them, but also your brain won't let you anyway. Cause then you're like, what if I, what if I lose? I, I think I have it, but what if I lose yep. this? You know? Yeah. I was writing that line. I think Sam left about nine ish. And then I continued, I was like, I got to, I got to do this. And I continued going and for two more hours last night, but I got maybe 15 minutes of work done, <laughs> but that's how far away I was from being done. Yeah, right? right. Like, so <laughs> yep. I was so tired and I couldn't do anything, but I was like, I just, I have it. I have it all in my brain. Got to finish out. it. I just got to awkwardly jam the pieces together. Yeah. That's where I was actually at the start of the jam too, because on Thursday, when did we come to the office for the first day? Was it Wednesday? Wednesday. 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 So on Wednesday, I started a uh, a major overhaul of of the entirety of Rumpus, mm-hmm. uh, and then we needed to be able to launch something in Rumpus, mm-hmm. you know, by tomorrow morning. This is a classic. Let's just let's patch it real quick just, before the conference. Kind of do it. <laughs> and uh, and so I, I basically I've been in that space where I've been having these mental models that are just like super elaborate that are just mm-hmm. sitting in there that I just have to finish all of the things before I'm allowed to do anything. Mm-hmm. It's just very, be very tense. It's very tiresome. I see Andrew P said he biked 30 miles in two days before the jam. That was in a good preparation. Move. Very good move. Yep. Smart it person. could be. Now, if you're not a biker, that's, that's what, a this, what this is going to do is it's going to explode your ass. And then <laughs> and it's sitting on it. You're going to be Ugh. sitting on your, on your just ruined ass cheeks mm-hmm. for the next 72 hours. Yeah, and I do see it's that uh, giant muskrat again supported Shenanah Jammers on their snack runs. This yes. So but thanks for that. That's super awesome. cool. He's your last year doing that too, which yeah. is awesome. Every, well, maybe every few hours, he was dunking some weird image <laughs> in there. Uh, and then often with dunking often, happening in the image. Yeah, yep. often with poems or weird references to things mm-hmm. uh, and then giving people pizzas and stuff like that. Pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, super nice. Uh, let's see. What else do we got here? Uh, we got, I think, Coffee Chemist said, uh, exhausted, sweaty, took a shower, felt rejuvenated, mm-hmm. Co- sleep completely broke, been drinking plenty of water, which is great, uh, had some parents to help cook, which is, again, having a team uh, around to get your back. Mm-hmm. Super, super good. Yep. Super supportive. It's nice. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any final questions for the audience? Yeah. I just I, any Any final thoughts about your sort of major takeaways or any change in perspective about either making games or about yourself, your own skills. Because I think that's the fun thing about game jams um, is that not only do you learn a bunch about, you know, a specific tool in a specific context, but oftentimes it shows you something about yourself. And that's, that's the fun part of doing the jams and doing these sort of high pressure events. Uh, it's, you know, it's the same thing as trying to achieve any big feat in a very short period of time is uh, even if you fail at it, you'll oftentimes learn a lot about, what you are. So just does anybody have any, any thoughts on sort of, you know, where they're at now versus where they were three days ago? Yes. Now, one time we, we were giving a talk and one of the questions we got was, do you feel like, uh, having made the games that you've made and gone through things you've gone through, do you feel like it has changed you as a person? Mm -hmm. And we said, of course, (laughs) (laughs) uh, because everything should change you a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, in the sense that, that there's all these interesting lessons kind of baked into everything that you do. And one of the things that we talked about, um, I think we talked about it in the kickoff Mm -hmm. maybe was about the idea of a postmortem. Yes. Um, So this is something that we encourage everybody to do is just, even if it's just a page or something, um, just get out a notebook, start writing or write up a blog post or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, And come up with a list of questions for yourself about, you know, just what went well, what went badly, what you would do better next time, um, how you felt your tools worked for you, uh, and just kind of, just kind of really unravel the whole experience. It's always extremely valuable. Yeah, absolutely. I saw, um, giant muskrat said the B Scott university stuff was invaluable to the first jam. Um, All right. Put up like four or five of those videos, something, something like that. All game maker stuff. Um, that's sort of a fun way that we got to, you know, help out and do that sort of thing. Uh, what Tusi said, reserve judgment of new teammates until after the jam. Then judge then them. Then judge them so hard. <laughs> but it's true. It's like uh, you, have to, you have to give people a lot of, I think, goodwill 
uh, good faith when you first start, especially on teams. Yeah. And especially if you're, if you've never worked together before, or if you're using tools that either of you is unfamiliar with, because you know, you can be someone who's a brilliant, say painter, but if you're like, Oh, we're going to make this game in Pico eight. So it's all pixel art. Well, you give them you a little time yeah. to warm up before they figure out what the hell yeah, they're doing. Because you're, you're, you brought them outside of their comfort zone mm-hmm. a bit. And sometimes you have the inverse happen, which is just the worst. When you bring someone on, they're like, I'm the best at everything. Like, I'm a painter, but it's the only thing I can do. And you're like, well, I guess we got to design our whole game around mm-hmm. that. And it turns out they're not a painter. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope not happen to anybody, but we'll see. Okay, so Degeki said, uh, having a jam toolbox is something that will elevate your output immensely takes the grunt work out of the list so you can focus on the real quality of the output. Yeah, this is a huge thing we do jams for, actually, is to get more tools in our toolkit to bring forward. So for me, on the art side, actually, it's oftentimes just about learning how to do a particular thing. So I learned how to do goo, sort of slime textures, uh, and then rocks. And then I had, like, sort of a weird mental breakthrough last night, like 9 p.m. Seth walked back in after his burrito run, and I turned to him and I said, I have seen the eyes of God. <laughs> <laughs> Because I figured out how to do an environmental tile thing that I just could not, just could not get. The involved. hilarious thing is when I walked in the office and you turned around and you said, I've seen the eyes of God. <laughs> my immediate thought was he probably figured out how to draw grass. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I, I feel like I figured, at least I got like another step I toward I knew it. you were struggling with that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I yeah. was like, I, I get it. I get where yeah. you're coming from. I see Mortal Glitch said, I surprised myself a lot, especially when it came to art. I used to always do loose stick figures and, and recolors. And this time around, I started entirely from scratch in an art tool I wasn't familiar with and just set aside time and ran with it. It turned out much, much better than expected. I guess another big part of it is uh, the nice thing about jams is you can surprise yourself because the time limits, the time limit exists and also it's going to end. So I feel like people kind of loosen up about trying a new thing because they're like, well, I mean, if it doesn't go well, it was only, I really only tried it for like two days. Like there's not too much you can stick to. Yeah. Yourself about. But there's, there's also this kind of interesting, um, what's like the 20 hour rule mm-hmm. where like you learn a lot of the most valuable parts of a, of, of any particular thing in the first 20 hours. Like, and then you start building on that. And of course you're not, you're not an expert by any stretch in not the first even, 20 hours. Not even anything uh, close to that. But, but the first 20 hours that you really spend in a focused way in a deliberate way on learning some new skill, mm-hmm. um, if you really just go for it, you get so many interesting new things out of it. Yeah. I mean, it gives you the chance just to stop, stop thinking about yourself and set your ego aside because you're so focused on the work that you forget the nonsense things that you have in your mind. Like I don't like art or mm-hmm. I can't do art cause I've never done it before. Or, or just sit down and did it for 20 you hours. You just get fine. in there. Yeah. And it turns out <laughs> you, you just got in there. You just got to get in there. <laughs> Uh, I see Mad Russian said, by the way, I want to say this jam actually helped me forget about my breakup. That's kind of why I decided to participate in the jam in the first place. Yeah. Working your butt off is a fantastic way to, you know, get over all, get over all kinds of stuff. Breakups, cancer, (laughs) you know, as as Sam could attest. Yeah. It's fantastic for it. So um, we've done this before. Sometimes if we're, if there's sort of a collective funk happening, which has happened on occasion, then we'll just do a jam day in the office full 12 hour day just like on a Tuesday because you just gotta do it everyone's just like I need to get you done <laughs> just yeah. Like, yeah one of the times that Sam was stuck in the hospital and Seth and I were just like we we're just like feeling real weird you know because mm-hmm. of, of the situation so we we're just like fuck it let's just make a game and so we made it was a, it was that that weird multiplayer it was sort of like 2048 but yeah but it was like but co-op it was co-op multiplayer it was weird it was very mm-hmm. weird. It was good it was fun though forgot about that yeah uh, we also had uh, Coffee Chemist said, uh, this jam, although taxing, has been a massive boon to my mental health. Got a lot of validation from both the community and friends. Cool. So, again, kind of that, you know, if you're in a funk, if you got mm-hmm. some if you got some things you're just trying to work through, you know, having having something like this where you can now just be like, I did the shit out of this thing. <laughs> yeah, something right. you can put your name on and, and be really proud of, I think, is extremely helpful for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, super and fun. Matron clearly learned from last year's Shenando Jam. Mm. And tightened the scope a bit <laughs> yeah. so that things went much better and were less uh, horrifyingly intense. Yeah, it sounds like Max, Max, Max had the same experience, uh, which is felt like this was the first one that actually got fully finished because the scope was small. So that's that's also one of the tricks is that actually as you do more jams, it's not even necessarily the case that you're uh, necessarily the case that your skills are increasing a ton, but rather that your ability to determine what you can accurately do in a 40 hour window gets better to the point where you can actually make an idea and then make that idea as opposed to <laughs> coming up with some grand scheme and then failing super hard at it. Yes. Yeah. But I, I have to say, I mean, if, if this is your first jam 
and you did overscope. Mm-hmm. You, you, maybe you didn't finish the game. I mean, still, you still got time, so yep. you might be able to cut some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you did overscope it, if you did kind of go too hard and then ended up uh, being kind of bummed, bummed about about where it landed, um, you just you got to recognize that that's usually what happens. Yes, like, uh, a lot of people when they first get started, they because you you haven't necessarily pumped out enough games that you understandably have no frame of reference for how long any piece of this process takes. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe you've played a lot of games and you see, you've seen things that on the face of it seem pretty straightforward. But then when you get into even just like, how does someone stand on the ground without falling through it mm-hmm. forever? Turns out that that's a lot more complicated than you would think. Significantly. Yeah. yeah. And so I think the important takeaway, um, if you're kind of in that camp is to just recognize that, you know, it's all part of the learning process. Yeah. And so, uh, going forward, if you do more jams, if you build more stuff, now you know. Yeah. Now you know. Focus on the process, not the outcome. Yeah. And so, so, I, so I think props to Matron for, even though maybe overscoping last time. Yeah, coming back and doing another one. Coming back and then mm-hmm. adjusting and, yep. and actually doing something uh, something cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I think so. Um, just to kind of wrap everything up, as far as what will be happening in the next 12 hours or so, I think we have 12, 13 hours left before the uh, jam concludes. Um, people will be submitting their games. We'll submit ours as well. And then uh, there'll be a rating period for about two weeks where you're definitely encouraged to pull down uh, just even just like a random assortment of, you know, five, ten games and and go through and actually play it and give the person a rating, leave them some comments. Uh, keep that sort of co- the community feedback going because that's a big part of the, the shenanigans jam, a big part of the difference of what we try to do versus some other jams is actually get people to uh, to kind of you know have some chatter about what the games are like and you know what they like and don't like. So definitely do that. Um, the shenanigans jam will happen again next year. This is a yearly thing. Presumably. Uh, presumably. It does. It takes quite a bit on, on our end to, to put it together. Uh, so we we try to do it. We would try to do it more, but it's a, it's a bit of a thing. So every year is <laughs> good got, enough. We got these uh, games to make. Yeah. Jobs. Uh. <laughs> Mon- you know, we got to pay the bills. Yep. Both with on this new office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we'll, we will be back next year for that. Um, and then for, for those of you who listen to the podcast, you know, thanks for listening. And, uh, and hopefully we'll see you on there more so in the next couple weeks as we put more casts out yes all right well that's all the time we have mm-hmm. for this live episode live recording first one ever first pretty one fun. ever mm-hmm. um this was pretty fun so maybe we'll maybe we'll try to you know, do this kind of thing again at some mm-hmm. point yeah um so we'd like to thank our producer fat bard for making us sound good uh thanks to our community moderators who keep our discord and forums running if you'd like to get more involved in the butterscotch community you can hop into our Discord server at discord.gg slash bscotch. Also, if you'd like to adorn your body with butterscotch merch, you can check out our shop, which is over at shop.bscotch.net. If you'd like to go play Shenanah Jam games, go to shenanahjam.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'll be up. And there's yeah. going to be, a I'm going to guess, at least 100. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with 150. Let's see it. That's my guess. I'm going to price is right you. I'm going to say 151. <laughs> you. Is that, is that how it works? I think I it's that <laughs> Um, also, if you'd like to send us anything, we do have a mailbox, which you can find the address for over at mailbox.bscatch.net. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.